Hello and welcome to session three in this short demonstration of SAP Power Designer for Data Architects. I'm George McGeeky. In this third session, we are going to take the logical data model we created in session two. We're going to generate a physical data model representing a SQL Server database. We'll do some editing to that because we no doubt would in the real world. We're going to have a look at the SQL for the database. Then we're going to identify some candidate facts and dimensions for an OLAP cube and build the model of the OLAP cube inside our physical data model. So first of all, let's have a look at the logical data model we have. Remember that we have a number of entities here which were generated from the CDM and we have loyalty account state and I have actually added a couple of more a couple more attributes here to loyalty account state reason code and effective date time and we'll be using those in our OLAP cube later on let's move on with this then after a quick look at this inheritance here. If you saw session two, you'll see that, you'll remember that the generation tab on an inheritance tells Power Designer what you would like to have generated in your physical data model. At the moment, if we were to generate tables from this model now, we will not get the parent table, so there will not be a loyalty account event table, but we will get the two child tables. That is loyalty point transfer and loyalty point purchase. If we choose to generate the parent as well, and then later on say we don't want the parent or we don't want the children, we can deal with that in the physical data model through the denormalization utilities. But for today, for this demonstration, we're just going to generate the child tables. And we do this via the tools menu, selecting generate physical data model. We can choose a DBMS. As you can see, there are quite a few here. I'm going to use SQL Server 2016. I need a different name for my new model. I'm having a look at the model options. Here is the choice of notations. I'm going to go with conceptual notation uh, because it uses crow's feet and I'm used to using crow's feet. If the arrow is at the wrong end or it's got um, filled in circles and non-filled in circles, I have to interpret them all the time. I'm used to interpreting crow's feet. So here we go with conceptual. On the detail tab, I'm making sure I do not check the model before generating it. Normally I would to make sure that it meets all my rules before generating a physical model from this, but for the sake of demonstration, I will not. And I'm going to save generation dependencies. In terms of selection, I'm going to tell it to run against all the tables, all the entities that I'm allowed to generate from. Here we go. Clicked on OK. On the generation tab here, there are a few messages about from generating the model. It's generated business rules, domains, entities, relationships. It's renamed a couple of relationships. Slightly different rules here about the uniqueness of relationship codes in the PDM. Now looking at the PDM we've created, we see here we've got entity seven. We have loyalty point transfer loyalty point purchase and we don't have loyalty point event. The relationships that loyalty point event had in the logical model have been replicated down at the child level here. I'm going to make a notation change here after adding my title symbol here. I'm going to go into the display preferences and change the format of references because I don't like these jagged lightning strokes. I'm going to make them right angled with rounded corners because I find on a busy diagram it's easier to tell which line is which 
if the corners are slightly rounded. Okay, so let me just move that one up there. I'll move this here and this here and this here. Here is our physical data model. I'm now going to look at the generation links viewer. We saw that in the logical model and the generation links. The origin model is the LDM. So we can see the business rule came across, all the domains have come across, and the entities have been converted into tables, and the relationships have been converted into references. At the moment I haven't saved this physical model yet, so I'm going to save it. Tell it where to put it, it's going in the same folder as the others. Notice the LDM needs saving because it has information there about how it links to the physical data model, so I'd better save that as well. In fact, now I don't need it anymore, I'll quite happily close it. This is a data model for a data warehouse and all good data warehouses have source data tables. This one is no different. I have a table here with source data in it. It's going to contain a column just like this one called description text. And it's also going to contain columns called point balance and member name. This one, I'll call that description. This one I will call points. So my source data comes with these three columns. Now I need to tell Power Designer, well, where does this data come from? Let's document that. I'm going to use the mapping editor to do this. I'm going to say that I'm only reading the data and I'm mapping to a physical data model. Click on next. This is the physical model I want to use as my source, which is the current one, it's the only one open. Do not want to create the default mappings between the source tables and the target tables because they're the same tables, it will map everything to itself. So here we go. Here are my tables. Two views of the same database. Here is the source and over on the right is the target. So the source data, I'm saying that my source data table is the source for loyalty account. It has mapped one of the columns automatically. Now I'm going to tell it that that one maps to that and the description, for some reason, holds the loyalty account number. Now if I look at one of these mappings down here, I can see some information about it. If I select the table on the right, I can see the mapping information for the table, including the SQL necessary to select the data. Nothing's happened to the diagram because that's all behind the scenes. So I'll save the model again. Let's look at the SQL preview for our source data table. Tables, views, etc. and the model itself have a preview tab showing the code that will be generated. Notice here the code as you would expect, possibly not in SQL Server, but, but the code here uses these names which are underscored and in uppercase. Look up here at table properties. We have two names apparently for the table. One is the business name, source data, and the other is that business name converted. In this case it's just converted to uppercase with underscores. In our conversion rules we could actually tell it to look up certain words or phrases and abbreviate them. So we could have what well, might look like quite a different code. If we look at the code here, you see we have the, the name of the table and you can see it's automatically generating the code from that name. I will just cancel that to make sure I don't do anything drastic. Have another look at another table so we can see a more complicated table here. 
up here on this toolbar we can show and amend the options that we use to control how we generate the SQL. What content do we have, want to have in the SQL? So for table, for example, we can say we do or don't want to create tables, or perhaps we don't want to drop tables. We don't want to drop primary keys. We don't want to drop alternate keys. Down here, once we've finished setting our options, we can save these settings so they can be reused. So that's the SQL required to create a given table. If we look at the properties of the whole model, the model also has a preview tab. This is the SQL that will be generated from the whole model. Realistically, you will probably have users in the models that are representing schemas and you'll be generating schemas, but this is an extremely simple model. Again, we can get to the generation options here and we have a button here that tells it whether to, or not to actually take any notice of the generation options. So if you click on ignore, this is the absolute maximum that we would generate. So here we're including user-defined data types. Now what I'm going to do is, is identify potential multi-dimensional objects, potential facts and dimensions. Power Designer has worked out that loyalty account state from this red cube, I can see it's a potential fact and it has some potential dimensions linked to it. Now I'm going to get it to take that information and generate a cube. It will put the cube into this model. Here's the candidate fact. Let's go back, make it select all those tables as the fact. Here we go. Yes, it's examined all of those. And we have a measure here. I'm going to give it another measure. Click on finish. And it's built me a model here of a cube. If I had the uh, business objects available, I could actually generate a business objects universe from this. Notice it's a slightly different kind of diagram. On the mapping tab here, I can see the criteria, the, the cube select SQL for population populating the cube, all generated from the underlying metadata. I better rename my diagram, my PDM diagram here. It was up here. This tab up here was my PDM diagram, but it was still saying LDM. And now I should save my physical data model. You can see my model has got a few more types of objects in it. These associations are here. The facts and dimensions are from the OLAP model. I've got my data source created by the mapping editor and my standard domains, tables and references and the tables have columns, keys and indexes. Well, thank you for listening to session three. It's been a very quick walk through these topics. In session four, we'll glue all this lot together by creating a project to demonstrate the traceability, the way Power Designer links all these things together. Thank you. Goodbye.